Well, everything from disease prevention to variable rate seeding was discussed at the annual field day held recently in Midville, Georgia. Monitor's Damon Jones was there. Here's his story. It was another big crowd out in Midville as producers from all over the state made a trip to the Southeast Georgia Research and Education Center for the fifth annual field day. And a big topic of discussion was, of course, the weather, as it's caused a number of different problems for peanut producers. As for the advice given, we're certainly behind. I just say be patient. Don't trigger your uh, harvest or your digging dates based on uh, a calendar date. Uh, we're certainly not looking at 135 or 140 day peanuts this year. I think we're going to be certainly a week to two weeks behind that. Different techniques on planting the crop was also discussed, specifically variable rate seeding. And while its effectiveness is still debated by some, there are obvious benefits to giving it a try. With variable rate seeding, we know that uh, if there are, are hot spots in a field from, uh, from various diseases, uh, for instance, white mold, which spreads from plant to plant, we know that uh, with a reduced seeding rate and a lower plant population, we can help reduce the spread of that disease down the row. In addition, we can also help get fungicide down through the canopy uh, to the plant and, and assist with uh, uh, delaying the spread of that disease. Cotton crops were also on display as the growing season is in full swing. While the crop looks good so far, there is one specific disease producers need to be on the lookout for, especially in South Georgia. Our number one issue that we're dealing with right now is um, corn espera leaf spot or target spot. Um, corn espera is associated with um, the growing conditions of the plant. It thrives in low, um, excuse me, high humidity, um, high heat conditions usually starts at the bottom of the plant and works its way up. That means farmers are encouraged to constantly scout their fields because the disease is simple to spot and can be treated very effectively if caught early. It's easy to identify by the concentric rings that are there that make it look like an archery target, and that's the reason it's called target spot. So it's fairly easy to find. You start at the bottom of the plant and start looking up. Um, when you identify the plant, it's very important that you um, realize what growth stage that the plant is in. We get very good control when we apply fungicide at week one or week three of bloom. Soybean management was also a focus on this tour, and you can't talk soybeans without mentioning the kudzu bug, as it's a pest that's caused major problems over the past few years. However, it seems the producers have learned their lesson. I do think our growers have learned to scout for the pest. Uh, they, they, they have an understanding of, of when treatments are needed. Uh, we're a little fortunate this year, or we're, we're fortunate this year, and numbers don't seem to be as severe as they've been the last couple years, so that's been a good thing for our growers. They say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and that's definitely the case when dealing with this insect, as proper timing can have a major impact on the problem. Planting date has a very dramatic effect on the number of kudzu bugs we expect to see uh, in soybeans. Unlike many of our other soybean insects, the earlier we plant soybeans is when we tend to have higher kudzu bug numbers. And this day isn't just for the attendees, but also for the researchers, as they get a chance to show off what they've learned over the past year. Uh, this is a pretty important event to me. Uh, of course, you know, our research takes, takes place first, but conveying the message as to what we do and why we're beneficial, uh, and just showing how, how actually we're affecting the area and the local infrastructure as well as the state as far as agribusiness and feeding the nation goes. Reporting from Midville, I'm Damon Jones for the Georgia Farm Monitor.